good buttery slow-mo b-roll coffee footage i really am aspiring to be the peter mckinnon of theology and of course you need a good coffee montage to open your youtube video if you're gonna do that welcome to the channel today uh, great coffee montage to start things off today we're talking about why you and every pastor ought to have a youtube channel Okay, well maybe that's a little bit of an exaggeration because not everybody ought to have a YouTube channel. But uh, here is why I think YouTube is a great place for pastors and for Christians. Um, the whole point of being a pastor is gathering people together to do the work of God in the world. And so our job as pastors is to do that for wherever people might be. Uh, for me, in the past pandemic season, and I'm sure for many of you, you found that the internet is once again a good place to connect with people in ministry. Uh, many of us knew that before all of this, but uh, sometimes it's good to be reminded of that. Uh, for me, uh, back in January, I started on YouTube just posting a video every single week, partly to uh, build those repetition and muscle memory, uh, as well as the pattern of doing that in my own life, kind of like a spiritual practice. Hmm. And also, uh, so I could get better at things, uh, better at those awesome <laughs> slow motion montages that I aspire to be the Peter McKinnon of theology. Maybe, just maybe. Uh, maybe I need more coffee, so we'll see. But a couple of reasons I think that we need to be in these spaces in YouTube as pastors and as Christians. Um, it's a great way to get sort of a personal identity out there for people to know a little more about who you are and what you're up to in the world. Um, obviously, from watching my channel, you might know that I care a lot about <laughs> cameras uh, and learning about those things, uh, but also the way we tell stories. Um, I'm a big fan of Marshall McLuhan's The Medium is the Message, meaning the way we tell the story is the story. So from watching my channel, you are probably familiar with the fact that I work in a church and that I love telling stories through digital media, through cinematography and film and video. And one of the things that I love doing uh, that I've further explored is what I call church cinematography. For me, uh, YouTube is a good place where I can learn about how to do things. Uh, most everything I've learned from YouTube about how to film and how to do photography, but also asking friends who do it or people who work in production companies uh, and just learning from them. So there's ways that every pastor can do that. Uh, but also it's a digital presence. A ministry of presence is what Jesus did early in the days. Uh, he was with people. We as pastors know that like 90% of our job is just showing up to things. Uh, when someone is in trouble, when someone is celebrating, uh, showing up and being present, offering uh, what they call in the early church the charismatic presence, the showing up presence to be with people uh, in times that are good uh, and also in times that are bad. Sometimes not even saying anything except being present to and with people in the world. So uh, showing up and being present. Uh, YouTube, showing up, being present. Um, a big part of that is showing up on a regular basis to things. So for me, I wanted to do that every week, to show up on YouTube and to do more. Um, a lot of the things I'm creating on this channel don't really fit in a church setting on a church YouTube channel for Oak Grove, uh, but are great for me to explore that are not tangential to what I do as a pastor, but important to what I do as a pastor, to iterate, to try new things, to give uh, myself the leeway to fail well. YouTube is full of people failing well. Half of the videos that people watch on YouTube are someone failing and doing well. Um, I've even shared a couple of those in my own experience. But there's a whole host of things you can learn from doing YouTube. The internet is chock full of crazy ideas, great ideas, but I think YouTube specifically needs a more inclusive Christian presence. And so I'm an inclusive, thoughtful pastor and want to be that both in person in the world and also online. Uh, people do that through social media, but why YouTube? I think YouTube and video is a great way to interact with people in a meaningful way. Um, the comment section on YouTube can be a bit humane and kind as opposed to Twitter where it gets a little de deleterious and goes uh, wrong. 
Uh, but on YouTube, there's almost always a great community of people wanting to do things well together and support one another. So that's what I found on YouTube. Being a pastor on YouTube allows me to actually have interactions with people in good ways. I've met people at church and services, whether that was during the pandemic in the parking lot or on social media who are saying, hey, uh, we feel like we know you because we've seen you on the church YouTube channel or on different videos you've put out, but also from seeing your content and things that you're creating, things you're interested in, because believe it or not, pastors are people and we have interests. Uh, so for me and all of my camera nerdiness or the exploring the natural world and photography and video side of things, um, all of those things are part of who I am and part of my nerdiness, but also part of what's needed and helpful in the world of the church in this season. And so just like Gutenberg and the printing press and the times then, uh, now with the internet, this is a great way to meet people, to reach out, to be present in a way that is different than just inside the church building. Um, as a church with a growing YouTube channel and way we're streaming services online, providing content there for people's growth and spiritual development, um, we also have a whole host of other ways to get involved in the life of the church. And we advertise those things on social media just like any church does. But I met some folks today at an event, they'd seen a thing on Facebook and they came to pack sandwiches. Uh, and that was their first visit to our church. And so I met them, we talked, we've emailed, uh, and, and that's one of the ways people find that sense of community and belonging, even through the internet. In this new digital era of church and pastoring, uh, digital pastoring, <laughs> we find that there's this cycle of, of plan, create, film, edit, produce, export, put on the internet. There's this pattern of how we do that from sermon creation to content creation for small groups to anything you might create, even a YouTube video. Learning to film and edit video and do all this process that happens in a weekly basis allows us to get those reps in and learn more about how we can do those things quickly and efficiently because with any sort of content creation, uh, it will ask all the time you have of it and then want some more. But it allows you to get all those reps and those habits, even like spiritual practices, uh, where you get better at things as you do them more and more. There's a great artist named Austin Kleon who has a book that he wrote called Steal Like an Artist, which is about sampling and trying out other people's styles to find your own. But his second book is even more exciting for me. It's called Show Your Work. And so sharing your work as an artist makes you vulnerable to people's interpretations, thoughts, feedback. Uh, but what he, he argues is that when you share your work uh, in that vulnerable way, you get better at things. YouTube is all about sharing your work. And showing what works and what doesn't work so well uh, is, is nice because on the polished feed of someone's Instagram, you don't really get to know them necessarily. But on a YouTube channel where you're sharing your vulnerabilities appropriately and where things fail or succeed, you can really get a chance to know somebody well. Um, the internet, again, is full of people failing well and learning from those mistakes. Uh, and I love being able to show my work in a way that's meaningful for me to reflect back on, uh, but also to get better at processes and try different things. That was a big part of me trying this coffee montage to see if I could just even do it. Could I do it as well as Peter McKinnon? Probably not because I'm the only person filming myself. Uh, but are there ways that I could do it? Put some buttery, smooth, slow motion in there? Oh yeah, that's, that's what it's all about. As Christians, we believe that spirituality is both a private and public thing. In Methodism, we say that the public and uh, private parts of things, or we call them the inward spiritual practices and the outward spiritual practices, must be something we do together. That personal holiness can't exist without social holiness. And that social holiness can't exist without personal holiness. So that we need both parts of our spiritual life to be together, something both public and private together to allow us to better live into our commitment as Christians to do good, to do no harm, to love God and our neighbors. So that's why I think that every pastor ought to have a YouTube channel. It doesn't have to be something crazy produced, uh, but it's a great way for people to get to know you in a way that is a little more vulnerable, a little maybe unscripted or fully scripted, depending on your style. Uh, but I think it's a great way to learn and grow in this new age of pastoring in the digital ministry realm. So thanks for watching today. Uh, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're interested in more things like this about church cinematography and about doing sort of ministry in the digital parish. 
Um, if there's ways you want to get connected, find me on social media, connect us up. Uh, if you're here in Atlanta, want to grab a cup of coffee somewhere, uh, hit me up and let's do that. Uh, but again, thanks for being a great community of people with whom uh, we can show our work uh, and also fail well and learn together in ministry. So that's all for today, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Peace, y'all. Thank you.